Dad and kids play one. From advanced Maverick hunters who mastered the Z Saber to having one of the coolest boss battles in a fighting game. I'm Dad Mishima, and these are the six fascinating things about Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Number one, Marvel 3 is a new game from the ground up. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is the seventh entry in the fighting series, and for this installment, we got a massive overhaul. First of all, Marvel 3 has gotten rid of the 2D sprites, and in its place are 3D models. The models are well designed and cell shaded, yet it has a certain grittiness and comic book appeal. While the game uses 3D models locked to a fixed camera, its speed and precision definitely made it feel like a solid 2D fighter. For the most part, the game still utilized most of the functions from the previous installment. So that means we still get three members per team along with viable assists and the team hyper combo. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has two entries. The vanilla version released back in February of 2011 and Ultimate Marvel 3 was released in November of 2011. The game came out 10 years after its predecessor. Number two, the game has a four button attack system. Just like Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Marvel 3 uses a four button attack system along with Assist 1 and Assist 2. However, this time around, three of the buttons are used for light, medium, and fierce attacks, while the fourth button is called special. Now the special button is used for launchers, so pop-ups generally feel more automated in this game. Also, the special button can be used to activate certain abilities. For an example, Dr. Doom's flight mode can be initiated by doing a quarter circle back plus special. The game took away dedicated punches and kick buttons and wanted players to only focus on light, medium, and fierce attacks. This setup is kind of similar to another arcade fighter known as Marshall Champion by Konami. Is the control scheme ideal for the game? Well, I have my opinions, but I would much rather read what your take is in the comment section. Number three. It has an impressive character roster. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 followed Marvel 1 and 2 examples, but for this video, I will be focusing on Ultimate Marvel 3 version. So the roster is quite massive. It's not as big as Marvel's 2 select screen, but it's still impressive. Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 has 50 playable characters and one playable boss mode. In a vanilla Marvel 3 game, the base roster only had 36 player characters with two DLCs included. In the Ultimate Marvel 3 game, 12 additional fighters has been added to the game. These fighters consist of Dr. Strange, Ghost Rider, Hawkeye, Iron Fist, Nova, Rocket Raccoon, Firebrand, Frank West, Nemesis T-Type, Phoenix Wright, Strider Hear You, and Virgil. While the character roster supports the other new characters, the characters I just listed was made specifically for Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Number 4. It is the first game to include the Savage Hulk. So from Marvel Super Heroes, to Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the Hulk in each installment was the Professor Hulk. The Professor Hulk is largely considered to be one of the weakest Hulk forms even though physically, he's one of the biggest versions of the Hulk. Now in Marvel 3, we enter the Savage Hulk. Not only this version of the Hulk is one of the strongest variations, he's absolutely incredible in this game, no pun intended. So while the Savage Hawk plays very identical to his professional counterpart, he seems to be much more faster and hit much harder. Now to be fair, 
I don't really know if this is due from the game engine itself or if the Hulk has been massively amped up, but one thing's for certain, the Hulk is an absolute beast in this game. Number five, Galactus is the final boss. So Galactus is the boss of the game and honestly, he's not so bad in terms of difficulty, but he can get cheap at times. When you start the battle, you always fight two of Galactus' heralds. The heralds themselves are just recolored models of the playable fighters, they just look like Silver Surfer. Once you deal with them, you have to fight the planet Devourer himself. While Galactus has some powerful attacks, the one you really want to focus on are the double eye lasers, the five finger beams, and the attack where he shoots beams from both of his eyes and hands together. That last attack has insane chipping damage, so be careful. Also, he has an attack called a final smash that can potentially one-shot your character from full health. This move cannot be blocked, but only interrupted. So when you see him going into this animation, attack him as fiercely as possible. Number six, the elusive Jill Valentine in Chuma Garai. In his last entry, we always discuss secret characters in the game, but Marvel vs. Capcom 3 really has no secret characters, so we will focus on DLC. In the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of Marvel 3, you need to buy the two DLCs to unlock both Jill Valentine and Shroomo Garat. And these DLCs will actually carry over to Ultimate Marvel 3. But those items has been long gone from the Xbox and PlayStation Marketplace. So if something happens and you lose your data, then you're pretty much screwed. However, where there's a will, there's a way. If you buy the 2016-17 re-release version of Ultimate Marvel 3, the games come with all the DLC pre-installed. Well, that's it for this video. If you made it this far and you like what I'm doing, then consider giving it a like and even subscribing. With that being said, I'm Dad Mishima. See you next video.